So I've been a busy little bee and I've been participating in a game jam. If you're not familiar with what they are, you build a game within a set period of time to a theme. They're really fun and you get to experience and try different things. So this one was actually run by another YouTuber called Helper Weasley and he runs more of a devlog slash game developer channel and does all this really cool stuff. But he's running the Fireside Jam 2023 and it was a 10 day jam thinking like, oh yeah, that's pretty relaxing. But as jam fashion, it's never really relaxing, but really rewarding. And I've gone through and done a majority of the development right now, but now I'm at the music component. And because I run a nice synthesizer YouTube channel here and I run with the lovely Polyen Tracker, I thought, let's see if the Polyen Tracker can make a good soundtrack for a game because trackers and games have a lot of history together a lot of the music back in the day was done trackers but nowadays it's more doors and big like studios like look at halo and their soundtracks but i still think trackers have a lot of merit and i want to see how the poly and tracker handles up so let's get straight into it So coming into music, like we all think of music as a linear scale, like we start making our track here and work along and we create our arrangement, we have like our build ups and our releases and we have an end point. And if we go to any point of this and start playing forward, it's going to be exactly the way we want it. And similar to film, like you can go to any point in the movie and the sound's going to be exactly in the same spot. But when it comes to games, games are a linear experience because we give the control to the player. So the player could start out here and then they could start venturing out over here or the player could do a side one and go check out a shiny rock over here or go do a side quest over here. So when I come to music, I like to think of this as like ranging uh, tracks in blocks so like we have our uh, different states and we have our different energy and then we can like create variants so it's like we can do vertical stacking and then that's like our vertical mixing so we can add elements and take elements away this is where we can do things like horizontal mixing where it's like we could start here and then slowly transition into the states along a period of time and we can have different elements come in and out, uh, different versions, and yeah, we have like this nice blocking structure. So if we start to think of these like little micro tracks, so like this could be the drums and this can be the lead, or this could be like the low energy part or the high energy part, how do we all get this working together? So it's like we don't have blocks lining up like this and they don't sound too good. So this is where I personally like to use chord structures to control what's going on here. So I've just got like a basic outline and I know anything in this lane here is gonna have good notes that work together, saying like C major seven, or you pre-form like your major chords and then like with trackers and chip tune, usually end up with broken chords and then you use the melody line that's comprised of these chords here. So you're sort of emphasizing these points as you go through the plane and as it keeps repeating, it's like it all syncs up and like you can have like Say it goes from this into this version here. So we know that these play nicely together, these play nicely together. But when you transition from this one, there's a very specific point that happens. So you go through the planning, sort of make all this stuff. But because this is a game jam project, it's actually quite simple where it's just a whole bunch of these aligned in a nice way to sort of emphasize the sort of track that I'm going to do. So enough theory stuff. Let's get into the tracker. All right, I'm here with the Polyen Tracker and I thought let's sort of bring that theory side of the blocks into the Tracker workflow because Trackers themselves actually has a nice way of managing blocks. So we get that horizontal mixing and we got the vertical mixing. And yeah, so I did make like a little demo song with this pattern here. And now that I've got an idea of the direction I want to go, I decided to make a nice little template file. So. This is just a bunch of instruments that I like the sound of and I started programming in the basic sort of vamp. So if I just go like that and just go. So I've got the melody, I've got some chords and this is just um, some basic plotting. So but it's really following those chords that I've laid out per the blocks. I know 
when I'm working, everything's going to work the very same. And something that's nice with the poly end tracker, I can actually set up a scale. So I know all the notes are going to work nicely together. I've just got to pick the chords and how I want that to press. So what I've done is I've programmed everything in that I like the sound of. And I've got that melody line, which is sort of helping out. I've got some experiments for like um, some tracker delay going and like that background noise as well and what you would typically do is you would create a file and you'd start building out your song information like this and then this is just from the demo so it's got a whole bunch of information here but how I'm actually going to work with the tracker is each file so each project that i'm going to work on here i'm actually going to save out because i'm going to be using this export as it file and this is the way trackers can share files around back in the day but this also works inside of unity the game engine they use for the uh, demo just because of how unity handles it files like it's not like back in the day where you can get really nitty gritty and like pick out the different slots and be able to go through and add and remove and change things up it's like it just plays the file per beta so i'm just going to work within that constraint which means i'm going to have to create project files and then stitch them together so when it comes to me building out these blocks i really like starting with something that's simple so we've heard this but i like to start cutting and changing so usually the first sort of uh, melodic idea, so when the game starts, I think this is going to be enough. Like it's getting the interest, it's got a nice build up, and then probably when the bird comes in, I start adding extra elements on top of that. And being a tracker, I like working with uh, broken chords as well, so I could do stuff like this. So it's just a bunch of different ways to handle it, but it's not just like the uh, sound quality as well, I can change the voicing. So if I just do, whoops, and go to instrument, I'm gonna record, and it's gonna be a bit hard to see what instrument I'm working with. So I'm just gonna let it run. That's a bit noisy. That could be an area. It's a bit different. I think this one's going to work really cool for that water area so just changing the main vamp and then it's like we can come over here and then say we'll set that there Bring that. so from that initial template we've got something completely different but it still fits in that style and then i can bring in percussive elements and how i feel i want that area to feel so this is how I'm going to construct all the different types of music. So I'm just going to sit through and there's probably six sections that I'm working with, working from like that initial startup and like going through the different areas of the game. And then when it comes to the end, I'm because this uh, melody line here, if I just go to the end. It sort of doesn't end, it's more of a question response and then what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to change maybe this one. We'll just end on the C, that's going to be a stronger end and then I can just go from here. Yeah, that's a nice close. So that's probably how I'm going to finish the game. So it's just this loop that continually feeds into itself. And then when you reach the end of the game, it's just going to play that last one and then have a continual loop at the end that's just going to keep running until it finishes. So yeah, that's sort of plan. So I'm just going to sit here and plot it all in and then see how it goes inside the engine. So this is where it comes to the actual fun part. We have Unity open. So this is my main engine of choice. I've been using it for quite a while. But being a jam project, there's a little bit of mess. But really what I've done is I've explored the files off the poly and tracker and brought them onto a project file in Unity. So here's all the sounds, but I've sort of separated them out because these ones are the tracker.it files. And then these ones are the actual wave tables or wave files that I've exported out. So I'm not going to try and get into too much detail here. Really, it's about that sound component. 
but what you can see is when you bring in a WAV file into Unity, it will always compress it down using Og Vorbis, so really small file type, which is really nice, but the original file, 12 megabytes and 1.6 compression, so that's pretty good. However, the actual tracker file actually comes in at a smaller size and then Unity does some magic to make it into a sound file that we can put out. So it's probably still building that Og Vorbis file. And really, this was me to test out to see what sort of elements transition from that IT file into the Unity file. Because if you have a listen to both files themselves, like one's louder than the other, I did a little bit of mastering. But a lot of the information is carried across. And the way I feel Unity is taking that IT file is it's just taking the sample, none of the instrument parameters, and then turning that into a one shot and then it's using the uh, tracker as like the sequencer component so if we were to play the other one it's a lot more structured and it's got a lot more of those effects on top so i sort of pick which one would be best through the project itself and then i put it into my music component here so that's the whole soundtrack for the game all nicely broken up into those nice little blocks and then i have a nice little way of calculating where they are because Pretty much the camera follows up this cliff face going from down here all the way up here and then I can actually control like see where that is as a number and then that number sort of transition to the numbers over in this part here so I can go well where it starts to come up to the water I want you to transition into the third area so that's where I've got the nice little percussive area so it was just a nice way to do it because then if they start going back down the mountain thinking haha I'm gonna catch you out uh, it's going to change back into the previous sound so that was a really fun way to get the sound in and it worked really well so I'm pretty happy with this project and yeah did the poly and tracker do well with making a game soundtrack like I managed to get the sounds in and I got it all working but I really feel that's up to you guys to decide so I have left a link to this game in my description so if you want to go play it it's free it's a webgl version so probably 10 minute experience it's really fun Go check it out it was a lot of fun to actually sit down and build a game but this is something that i wanted to do on this channel not just because oh yeah i can build a game check it out but it's like game sound and adaptive audio is something that's really hard to find around and i've been focusing on this sort of area for a while it's a part of what i do so i thought let's make some content around this area if people want it to talk about how to create adaptive audio and talk about this sort of stuff but really if you like this one and you think it's a cool little project definitely give it that thumbs up and if you do have any comments about what you would like to see with adaptive audio do leave them down below I do go down there and answer questions so I try and support what I say as much as possible but in the end I did have a bit of fun with this one I'm probably going to have a bit of a break because making a game and making a video within that game jam uh, it's a little bit much but I might take a bit of a rest and get back into making some cool content so if you like what I do here and want to stick around I look forward to seeing you next time